as you can see, that's clearing up very nicely. They can use all of our threads there. Let's move on to a glass material because with this model we're going to have a lot of rain bounces occurring in real time. It's a lot of calculations to handle, but as you can see with our system here and uh, the Luxion technology, something that was almost considered impossible in the past is now very much a reality. If I go over here, it's my material library. I'll grab a glass, drop it on there. Something happens to my material, but I'll change it um, automatically. So I double clicked it, changed it to a glass, and you notice right away it's not very realistic. That's because I haven't checked two sided. As soon as I check that, now we get some realistic looking glass happening here. This is side. And as you can see, look how fast that's becoming sharp and clear. You know, we're getting a very realistic, high res image as we work. All the materials inside Keyshot, they are scientifically based, they're all physically accurate, and they all have real-world physical properties. For example, over here I have this index of refraction on my glass. What I can do is adjust this value. Now, index of refraction means basically how much light is distorted as it passes through an object. Uh, you can think of it like when you put your hand inside of a pool and your arm looks like it's broken. That's because the light is, is bent, you know, as your uh, arm passes below the surface of the water. Now, all this is occurring because it's bending the light. If I drop my index of refraction here, you can see that it changes the amount of distortion that actually occurs as the light passes through the chest pieces. Now also, um, you'll notice in here we have some dark areas. Uh, that's because we only have six bounces being calculated in real time. So as a light bounces and is reflected within the chest pieces and off each other, it's only being calculated up to six times. If I increase this value, we can go all the way up to 32, and now you see that we don't have any of those dark areas anymore, with the exception of the refraction on the, of the black uh, squares. And again, here we are, 32 bounces in real time, 1919 by 900 pixels, and look how fast we're getting an incredibly clear image. Uh, changing the color is very easy. I can easily click here. And just like all of our other materials, as you move around, it shows up in real time. Now one of the things we're most proud of is our all new translucent shader. Our translucent shader was developed, um, as is the entire application, by Professor Henry Glenn Jensen. Uh, he was a professor at uh, UCSD and he actually developed photon mapping. So for those of you in the rendering world, uh, you might know who he is. Okay. Now the example I have, the example I'm about to pull up, is um, real-time subsurface scattering and it's going to be ray tracing across two boxes machines with 24 threads in each machine. So we'll be ray tracing the image with 48 total threads, calculating full global illumination, ray tracing, and subsurface scattering on an 8.9 million poly model. This is still in beta, uh, and we only brought it out for the show, um, so it still has some optimization to do. But if I go to my uh, setup real-time network rendering, I'm going to click only render on slaves, and I'm going to click enable real-time network rendering. And that's going across both of these two box machines. They're set up uh, with their IP addresses, and they're configured on the network. Um, I'm going to close this, and now I'm going to reopen the same file now that the network rendering is enabled. As I said, it's in beta, so we're still ironing out all the bugs. And if I go to my real-time tab here, I'm just going to uncheck this so that we can increase our resolution here. And now, what 
So what we have over here, you can see our render box remote desktop connections. We're ray tracing this image across 48 threads right now. Now again, as I said, um, it's still in beta, so we're not uh, maxing out the cores just yet. Um, we have some development that we want to do on the load balancing that will uh, push this to near 100% uh, usage of all cores, if not all the way at 100%. And you can see here how clear this image is coming in. Let's get, let's get a closer look. Also, I'll pop up my heads-up display here so we can see what kind of performance we're getting. We like said 8.9 million polys. And uh, our resolution is 882 by 880. Okay. And let's go a little bit bigger. And we'll zoom in. Watch as it calculates the light scattering beneath the surface of that ear. Get real close so you can see a lot of detail here. So I'll stop moving and you'll see the light starting to fill itself in. Here you'll see it splitting across the screen. Yep. The reason is it's load balancing between the two render boxes. Um, that was a fast implementation to get ready for the show. We are will be implementing an, an adaptive uh, load balancing that will take into account the performance of each machine, and it will have a lot more intelligence than just splitting the image directly in half. Okay. So, yeah. wow. so that's a that's a look at Luxion Key Shot um, CPU based rendering across uh, 48 threads here. Um, just want to. Thank the people at Intel and at Box for supporting us. And uh, yeah, thanks Great. for watching the presentation. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.